After five months of floating in space, Chris Hadfield won't have much time to get a feel for the Earth under his feet because he'll soon be making the long flight from Kazakhstan to NASA headquarters in Houston. In fact, he's currently en route. The Canadian spaceman turned social media superstar dropped out of orbit last night in a Russian capsule. You can see the parachute coming down and the plume coming up from the soft landing engines. An unofficial landing time now at 9.31 p.m. Central Time. Uh, the three former Expedition 35 crew members returning to Earth. Recovery crew Hatfield was the last one to be pulled out of the cramped Soyuz, carried in a reclining chair to help him get used to Earth's gravity again. He flashed the thumbs up for the cameras. The 53-year-old astronaut blasted off on a mission to become the first Canadian commander of the International Space Station. But he returns as a true social media sensation for his YouTube videos, Twitter pictures, and tweets from orbit. And just hours after landing, Hatfield was already updating his more than 900,000 followers. A few hours ago, he sent out this tweet, his message, safely home back on Earth, happily readapting to the heavy pull of gravity. Wonderful to smell and feel spring. But before his tweet, he did have a chance to speak to his family. Joining me now is Elena Hatfield, Chris Hatfield's wife. So, Helena, what was it like for you to watch the Soyuz capsule finally land on Earth and know that Chris was almost back home? It was, it was terrific and wonderful and a little bittersweet because I, I, don't, know, I, I don't know whether he's so naturally... Uh, loving space that uh, I wonder how he'll uh, he'll like being back on Earth. Although he likes everything, so I think he'll be fine. Um, and a good shower would be good. <laughs> no, I gather his son Evan, Evan was telling us yesterday that's one of the things he's really looking forward to. But you had a chance to talk to Chris last night. So what did the two of you talk about? I did. He um, wanted to tell me he loved me, which was uh, one of the first things, and, and I was happy to hear that and told him back. And uh, he wanted. To, he told me he was feeling great. You could tell in his voice he sounded so good and strong and happy. And uh, and then he also said that they just had a wonderful ride down, and they were joking and laughing and and uh, and enjoying the heck out of the experience. So. Um, no, he sounded really good. You know, I, he's obviously an experienced space traveler, and you're obviously an experienced person watching him both take off for space and returning. But yesterday, were there any anxious moments for you at all with the landing? You know, yes and no. I, I just always assume that everything's going to be great. So I, um, I try not to focus on the not-so-great bit. But I realized this morning that my body... And my body must have felt the stress more than my brain because it, uh, um, I was pretty tired this morning, and maybe that was just the excitement of him coming home. But no, I, I, uh, I just, I just assumed it would be wonderful because uh, everything about his flight has been so terrific. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's exciting for you, but also a bit draining because you're thinking about it all the time. You also brought some expertise into this mission. You trained as a chef and actually did some of the tasting for the food that Chris and the crew ate over the past few months. So, so tell me a bit more about the menu and your, your part in it. Well, they, um, I, I did go to the tastings um, at NASA and, uh, and helped him select, but, he, you know, obviously he knows what he wants to eat and it was just interesting to be part of the process to see how they how they manage the their diet and the nutrition on board because it's such a key component to keeping them healthy so we know he's now on this transatlantic flight to houston when do you think you'll get a chance to see him well i should see him just after he lands at around 9 10 uh, central time uh, today in Houston time. Um, I'll be at Ellington Field when I'll go into the plane with Ann Marshburn and um, and see them before, you know, before anybody else on the ground does. And that'll be really nice. So I know that at uh, Hatfield's final news conference from space, he was talking about the things that he missed on Earth, one of them being the smell of food and the smell of a fresh cup of coffee. Is that one of the things that you're planning to do together? I may bring him a cup of coffee. He and I both uh, both like spending time over coffee, so that was uh, 
that's probably going to be a good trigger for me and uh, and definitely be picking some up along the way. <laughs> I, I'll bet you are asked this question a lot, but the, the question for everyone is, um, what will your husband do from here? I mean, it's a tough act to follow after this sensational adventure in, in space. Any idea of what he'll do for an encore? <laughs> you know, right now, the, the main thing is making sure he's healthy. And so our thoughts haven't gone much past um, making sure that he's healthy, that his rehab goes well, that, you know, right now he's a little bit of a, a giant lab rat, that's what I call it, <laughs> because they'll be doing his medical readaptation um, studies and, uh, and also the debriefs on the mission with the various uh, CSA in Russia and, and at NASA. So um, right now, that's all we're thinking about, one step at a time, right? You know what, Helena? I can hear the smile in your voice. So glad you could join us and so glad to be able to share this happy time with you. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks so much, Nancy.